being the host of a sizable automotive YouTube channel, it stands to reason I get a lot of emails from you guys, and we appreciate all of the emails. The majority of them, however, is usually, hey, my 94 S10 won't start, do you want to come do a video on it? Hey, my 96 Explorer's transmission is out, do you want to come do a video on it? Hey, my 2004 Hyundai has a bad fuel pump, do you want to come do a video on it? Unfortunately, and I'm sorry to say this, but the answer for those questions will almost always be no. But, once in a while, something crazy comes through my inbox where the answer is sometimes yes. And today's video is one of those. Ladies and gentlemen, a Cadillac swapped Bronco. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. I'm your host, Kevin, and this is your co-host, Junkyard Mook. And between us is a Cadillac Seville body on top of a Bronco frame. That's about all we know. This morning we hopped in the truck and drove six hours to Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Lake Michigan is right over here and directly across the lake from our current location on a four hour ferry ride is the Silver Lake Sand Dunes. This is going to be awful. Let's get it going. All right, so like I said, someone sent us an email about this car. Uh, thank you very much to the man who did that. We are now spending the week in Wisconsin. From what we understand, this has sat for about 10 years. Uh, I don't know who built it. I don't know how long it's been like this. It looks like we have a 70s Bronco frame. Uh, Dana 44 in the front and the uh, Ford 9 in the rear. We got some 31 inch tires and a Cadillac Seville body. This going to need some oil. Hello, hello. That is not a 351 modified like I was expecting. I think that's a 460 Ford. And that son of a bitch has got headers on it. <laughs> it's like we've got the classic uh, fly eye air filter that's going in the trash immediately. Unfortunately, directly below that, we have an Edelbrock carburetor. But fortunately, I brought a Holly. Because we're um, Holly equipped. Oh, hell yes, it spins. Okay. Oh, this took a day off the trip right there. Yeah, I, I didn't know if this spun when I got in the truck this morning. What's the chance the brakes work? I assume you already have electric fans. So someone's done some work to this thing. Like, make it decent. The frame doesn't look awful. Is this rich Corinthian leather? This is, this is our first Cadillac. I think this is, so. This is the first time we've rode in pure professional level luxury here on the channel with our four wheel drive selector and b &M shifter. We've got a tack, a voltmeter, water temp, and oil pressure, so that's all good. There's no key. This sat here and someone mutilated it once already. Okay, we might have to figure out something for that. The brake pedal moves. It doesn't do brake things though. And, oh, there's a the receipt, that's what we want. Welcome to Howard's Pantry, Howard's Grove, Wisconsin. 2001. They had some other cars that were sitting on the property. Uh, the guesstimation for this one's timeline is 10 years since it's last moved or anything. This says 20, and they said the other ones that were 20, so I'm starting to think they all match. I know B&M's logo doesn't look like that anymore. We might be closer to 20 years in this car. There is so much mouse poop. Well, I'm such a mouse nest above this visor that it doesn't close. <laughs> Holy cow, this headliner's gone. Might have to take that out. I'm also seeing a lot of wasp nests and wasps. Ah, they're good for you. Hell yes. I just need a new pair of glasses. Oh, these are prescription. I can't see a thing. <laughs> Holy shit. I can see. Oh die, god. Die from fashion. I can't see anything. Yeah, this dude was blind. <laughs> he had to be to drive this monstrosity. <laughs> I lost my glasses in it two years ago and I've loved it ever since. Well, what do you say we put a battery in it so we can see uh, if, the, <gasps> if there's anything in the trunk? Get those off your face! Brought all our goodies. We don't have the deck box today, but we do have our Tang Tools portable toolbox and all the boxes from our decked box. So we have it without having it. It took like eight minutes to pack that. It was awesome. Uh, Which one do you think runs the motor? <laughs> I'm guessing one of these is a positive for the car and the other one's the positive for the engine. What they had was a dual post battery. 
What we don't have is a dual post battery. Oh, the key is on. It's got a digital dash. It's got a speedo readout. And it works because it says zero. The climate control's on. And in classic GM form, it won't turn off. Oh, the antenna works. Ready for raccoon. <laughs> no raccoon. Dang it. <laughs> one of these days. Hey, remember how we bought a new hitch to come all the way up here because the old one was a little hecked up? Kind of There's two. Yeah, and a sway bar. I'm guessing they took that off. Ooh, this might have a year. I'm gonna say between 10 and 20 years. 1999 edition. So it's all adding up to be 20 years. Do they have brake lights? Yeah. yeah. Holy crap, so this thing's like wired and everything. Try the blinkers. Yep. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be driving this son bitch home. I'm really confused by the actual styling of this car because it, you have yeah, this nice dude. long sloping, sloping? I don't know what the word is. Sloping. sloping. I like sloping, personally. You have this nice long sloping. sloping line across the whole car. Then you think you would maybe follow at the body, but no. They went bonk, 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 bonk. They had their old design and then one of them got rear-ended and they were like, you know what? That looks I, great. I, I like that. <laughs> Okay, there's on, there's off. Okay, well we got those two. Let's go see if this thing's got oil in it and see if it spins. Well, I be needing this. So has the rust. There's just rust on the end of the stick. All right, let's spin this thing over by hand and see how it feels before we hit it with the starter since the pan's dry. Ooh, there's compression. It bounced back on me. There's a tight spot. I'm just gonna take her through easy. Once I do two rotations, we'll be good to go because your crankshaft spins twice as fast as your valve train. So you need to do two rotations for the camshaft to do a full revolution. While Mook's popping her plugs out, I'm gonna throw a cord oil in. See if we mark anything. It looks nice and clean in here, so, uh -huh. Wait a minute. This isn't even close to the right dipstick. It doesn't even make it out of the tube. It's like 10 inches too short. For once, the joke of, oh, I need a longer dipstick so it reaches the oil is actually true. <laughs> well, it's got at least a cord in it. I don't see any rust on the electrode, so probably okay. Get back in there! <laughs> Do we put oil on that one at least? Nah. My favorite no. one. That's, the others get jealous and then we'll have problems. Doing anything? No. That sounds like a starter not turning. Yeah. Okay, I've had an epiphany. The uh, second power wire is the one that runs the starter, so I'm just closing the solenoid and not doing anything somehow, even though that's not really how a Ford works, so. Well, if you, okay, the one on the battery with the regular terminal runs the electronics for the car and it's closing the solenoid, but there's no power to the solenoid until we hook up the other power wire. Then this will crank. Let's, let's go with that. So I don't have a permanent pliers with me. We don't have any other terminals. And I just like, good luck everybody kind of deal. There, good luck, but with a little force. Alright, let's see if it cranks now. Alright, sweet, she cranks. Sounds pretty good besides that one dead cylinder. I'm sure we'll figure out what that is in time. Would you like to do the honors, Mook? Okay. Alright, ready? Yep. <laughs> yep, that's Spark. Hell yeah. You gotta love digital electronics. All right, well, let's get that filter off and hit this thing with a little fluid and see if it makes noise. So what's so bad about these air filters? They breathe terrible and they catch on fire. So as you can see, they backfire and they melt and catch the whole element on fire. They're just, they're, you see them on 350s at car shows and tea buckets, because they look cool. Anytime something usually looks cool in the automotive world, uh, especially in this aspect where it just looks cool, it's not doing anyone any good. So we'll put this over. There. 
Let's get some fluid down that and see what happens. All right, so we got rotation and spark. The last thing left is fuel. Um, I'm gonna disconnect the existing fuel line so we can see if our fuel pump is good, see if our tank's good, any of that good stuff. I don't want those first few pumps of fuel going into our carburetor. I don't actually want any of that fuel going into our carburetor seeing it's sat for so long. All right, give her a heck. Oh. Dude, like it was parked yesterday. You see any oil pressure? 60? Oh, you see it going down. There was 60. Did you say it was 60? Yeah. Let's do it again. Yeah, so there was a sizable mouse nest in the exhaust. How's it sound? Sounds amazing. It's gonna be a good week. Look at how good that runs. I think it runs so well. I am a carburetor. <laughs> So I have to apologize, after four years of service, our camera finally decided enough was enough and developed a severe audio issue for certain parts of this video. I'll try my best to edit around those and I thank you guys for your patience as the new camera is finally on order. For now, we think our fuel system works, we're just out of gas, so we're gonna take a quick trip to town. We just drove into town to get gas. But look at, it's still here. 20 years later, Howard's Pantry is still open and it's where we're going to get gas. <laughs> just walk in. Hey, in May uh, 2001, some guy came in here. It's like, <laughs> you know who it was? It's Here's like some 16-year-old kid behind the counter. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Here's the turn. And son of a bitch, it's a locking gas cap. Ow! Shit! That hurt. I don't need skin on any part of that, my thumb. You know what? I bought these ironically. <laughs> They've turned out to be one of the best things to own. I'm missing all the skin on this finger, and I just smashed the shit out of this one. This is going good. Yeah, grab you are going to die. It's personal now. Oh. Oh, okay. Coming out little by little. <laughs> I know. We're getting there, Mook. Oh, there went the metal bit. Can't be tight if it's powder. Okay. That sucked, but we got it. Once I cleaned out the remnants of our gas cap, I threw three gallons in the car and we headed up front to see if it would pump it into a bottle. Hit it again. kind of intermittent and it should have moved a lot more fuel in that in that amount of time but it moved fuel let's hook it up and see what happens go ahead Accelerator pumps are working. 
It's not the best gas, but it's gas. It started coming out the vent, which means the pump's actually working well enough that now we have problems with our needle and seat. All right, so for the moment, we have a working fuel system. Uh, I don't expect that to be a permanent thing. It stinks. It, it does stink. Okay, that might be one of the first hill brocks I've ever come up to that runs after sitting for that long. Usually they, they have problems with not idling, which this one's doing, but I think it's flooding out is why. Let's figure it out. Did you see the smoke burning off the belts when we first fired it up? What's it like inside? Blue. Oh. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you. Before we do much more running, let's get some water in this thing. She is dry. Don't spill. Some of it made it in. <laughs> oh, I did it. All right, where well, you seem to be really lean. I'm just gonna turn these and say that's gonna make a big difference. Not. But you never know, there might be some stuff stuck in those needles that I just broke loose. Hit her again, Mook. <laughs> okay, we seem to have no idle circuit. That seems to be an Edelbrock thing I've seen time and time again. I don't know why. Uh, when they sit for a long time, they lose the idle circuit. If I can figure out how to get this choke to work with me. Once we found the choke knob inside the cab, we lubed up the linkages and got the choke to close down. This was just enough to get the car to idle roughly, but idle nonetheless. Seeing that we now had a running engine, it was time to put some air in the tires and see if the transmission was good. Well, I figured out where all the coolant went. This was missing a hose clamp down here and it's pouring out. Mook and Jesse found it, so props to them. I was still fighting the tire that refuses to take air. See if this son of a gun will move. I'm gonna get it running, which will be challenge one. Challenge two will be see if anything happens when I drop it in drive. Uh, challenge actually 1.5 will be get the shifter to move and figure out its pattern. And then challenge three will probably be get it in four low if it doesn't come out of the hole. This could get interesting. <laughs> And of course, the microphone dies. At this point, I had my cameraman lock our hubs in while I battled to get the car into four low. Once it was in, we dropped it in the drive, gave it a little bit of throttle, and she came right out. So that went way better than I was anticipating. The transmission worked. We didn't have to put any fluid in it. The transfer gauge went right into gear. The shifter and everything moved. It wasn't all seized up. And then it drove right out of the hole with two flat tires. Tires are supposed to do that, right? Oh yeah, those. Uh... I've never seen that work that well. <laughs> it jumped the car in the air. I think we can all agree that those tires are junk, which is okay, because like I said, we brought more. That was so cool. I know. <laughs> Have you looked at this tire yet? Oh yeah, like... no, I saw it. It's, it's completely obliterated. Yeah, I man, it's pronounced obliterated. <laughs> if anything was obliterated, it's that right there. <laughs> Whoa, you got the window going. I fixed it. I'm a wizard, what can I say? 
Uh, poop everywhere. Ah, Jesus. The real miracle is that they turn off. We're supposed to rescue it, not throw it on the ground. Holy balls of cruise control. Thank you. <laughs> it's stuck in it. Do it again. Aw. Oh. of crap just fell out of the wheel well when you honked the horn. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can switch everything to metric. Now it's still full but in metric and still doing zero but in metric. Well, let's figure out our uh, blown brake lines and other stuff for tonight so we can go get some parts and come back tomorrow. Some bitch only got 50,000 miles on it. <laughs> it's absolutely 50 or 150,000 because I can look at the brake pedal and half of it's worn down to a nub as far as the rubber goes. You're a nub. Oh. <laughs> There's the face. Moment of truth. What are we thinking? Fronts, rears? Fun. I'm, I'm thinking fronts. Bofa. Jesse's probably right. Jesse wins. It's Bofa, but there's a little fluid left in the rears. So let's fill that up and see if we can figure out where the leak is. All right, Jess, give us a slow push down. Oh. Slower. Up. Slow down. Slow. Slow. It's brakes, not a fountain. I can't move my foot any slower. <laughs> Slowly down. Dare I say this, we might have rear brakes. You know what shirt I packed for you? Oh, I have to wear that tomorrow. Can I press the pedal hard and fast? Not fast, but you can press it hard. Oh! Jesse! <laughs> barely moved. He's excited, it's his first time. <laughs> God, Jesse! Let me put the rubber piece back on. Uh, there's a chance these brakes work and the fronts just need bled a little. That's the face of confidence. You don't need brakes on sand dunes, right? I don't know. I've never been on sand right? dunes. <laughs> People in the comments, do we need brakes on sand dunes? Just kidding. We'll already be dead by the time you comment. So, we've been pumping on it for a while to get the air out and it feels like a totally good pedal and all we just put fluid in. This can't be real. Is this real? This isn't real. I'm gonna see if we got brakes, somehow. Unfortunately, as soon as we fired the car up, the microphone took a crap and the brake pedal went straight to the floor. Seeing that there was now vacuum boost present, I had an idea as to what was going on. Yeah, my theory is correct. There's none in the back. What just happened is our master cylinder uh, seal is bad around the piston, and as soon as that brake booster fired up, it induced vacuum into the back of the piston. It's a brake booster, big cake looking thing. Master bolts on, you get a little bit of space with a rod, and then your piston, a seal, the rest of the piston that's all in the fluid. Well, if that seal fails, and the seal back here on the master isn't the best either, that vacuum force can get into the back of your piston and pull all the fluid out of the master. So we need to swing by and get ourselves a new master cylinder, and then I think we'll be okay to go. Try it now, Jesse. Do you feel anything? Slowly. Been robbed. Just kidding, we took the tires off last night. So, last night, uh, apparently we had some technical difficulties with the camera. Basically last night we were able to pump up our brakes, they felt good until we fired it and then they went to poop. So we scoured all over the town of Sheboygan, found ourselves a new master cylinder, took the tires off after we shut the camera off last night, and mounted up these 35s I had laying around. Thank you guys. Go, have a good one. No idea if they're gonna fit, but there's only one way to find out. Let's get to it. Keep her going. Let's talk like we're from Wisconsin. No, we don't. Wisconsin. No, we don't. Oh, everywhere I go and I ask for parts, and like, do you have one of these? And they're like, oh, let me check. That fits, and it actually looks way better than the 31s or whatever it had prior. It might touch the car over here, but we won't worry about that. It's gonna touch right there. Ah, that'll self-clearance, I'm sure. This is metal, though. It'll yeah. self-clearance. It'll pop. I don't. I've been battling wasps on the front line since 2020 we did the tow truck series. Yeah. 2020. 
first. Before you do that, do you want to look at the brakes at all? Not really, no. Ignorance is bliss, Jesse. If I pull this off, we're going to be here for another day. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I wore the shirt, though. Thank you to whoever sent this in the mail. Well, I can tell you right now they're pretty worn because they, uh, they're they stuck in the groove. You know what, for once, we don't have to drive very far with this thing, and we brought a trailer if all else fails, slash we can't figure out how to insure it since it's, I'm still assuming 70s Bronco chassis, 85 Cadillac Seville body, neither of those which I'm completely confident with, but it's registered in Wisconsin to the state as a 2001 reconditioned truck. <laughs> I don't know how to insure this thing. We'll figure that out when we have to figure that out. Let's get this tire on. What is happening? <laughs> this horse thing. See, this is why I replaced them with cars and turned them into glue. <laughs> you can't say that. All right, guys, what happened? It's not an like, offensive opinion if it's just historical facts. It's what happened. <laughs> All right, how's it look? Oh, hell yes. That is so much better than when we showed up. It needed 35. <laughs> Kevin, go stand by it. You're what? 6'1", 6'2"? 6'2". It is 6. <laughs> Alright, well that's ridiculous. Let's see if we can rebuild the car and get some brakes working. So in hindsight, we should have done all that first before we put the tires on. I can't even reach the carburetor. I can do this. I can't do this. <laughs> Let's change out our master. I hope that fell all the way through because I can't reach anything. We're good. If you ain't bleeding, you're not getting a battery terminal on correctly. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. What happened? You gave me this as a tool. <laughs> it's a tiny knife. It should have had tiny risk. Is that my blood? It might be. <laughs> Off with the old master cylinder. So here's the back of the piston I may or may not have been talking about earlier. This guy moves forward and moves the fluid around. He'll have a seal on him in this bore, right about yonder. And this is all fluid. If that seal fails, the vacuum force back here in the booster can pull everything back past that seal. Not usually something that happens, but it was full one second and it was empty the next as soon as we fired the car up and there was no fluid on the ground, so. Oh. Strange world, let us know. It is. We'll get this replaced either way. Just one less thing to fail on the road. Brakes are terrifying when they go out. People die, and I don't want to die. Despite what my recent purchase decisions may look like, I actually want to stay alive. All right, new terminal. So we did actually bring a holly carb, but we're gonna give this Edelbrock a chance and rebuild it. So I'm gonna take this off, and Kevin's getting the rebuild kit ready to rebuild this guy on the tailgate of the truck. Out with the old and in with the new. Get this guy all bled up, fill our lines up from the top, reconnect them. Hope that magically like keeps its bleed and we don't have to go pop open some brake bleeders because I'm afraid of what's gonna happen if we do <laughs> a full brake job. Ta-da! Lots of bubbles. Good, the new master solar works. You'll love to see it. All right, do a couple little pushes right there. Yeah, keep that up for a little bit. That's the key. Go all the way down and fluctuate that last little half inch. And you'll get a bunch of bubbles out. And then you come all the way up and you fluctuate the first little half inch and you'll get them all out of this side. And then of course also do some nice big long strokes for the whole thing and eventually you'll have everything done. But this is the fastest way I found is just worked that last little half inch. Hey, there we go. Just a matter of seconds later, she's down to just fluid coming out. All right, go all the way up, and now just the first half inch. And there we go, there's all our bubbles out the front. We'll keep at that for a bit till the bubbles stop, give her some full strokes, and we'll be done. Easy peasy. Oh no, I hear brakes up yep, here. I hear a brake line. So, if you can see, right here, it's absolutely pouring out of that line. So, it rusted right where this little clamp was. Uh, the shitty part about Broncos, which I had some of these damn lines, I didn't think to bring them. They have a special line from the center all the way out. There is no, like, soft line that screws in. It's all one piece. I might be able to get a joint in here, though, and fix this original hard line. Is it going to be perfect? No. Is it going to work? Probably not. But we'll find out.
All right, new section of brake line. Cool new tool to show you. This is a tool made by Capri. You can get these on Amazon. You can also just go down to O'Reilly's and buy their brand. This one's for 316s. So you can get them in a uh, quarter and other sizes as well. Basically, you have your nice little nifty handle and your uh, double flare tool, and it makes life really easy. Take your line, stick it in the back, line it up with that line right there. And if you can't see it, there's a second piece that I don't have with me today that you thread in there and it sits, it's just a flat stud and it sits at that depth. So if you can't see what you're doing, you just dink until it hits and bottoms out and then tighten it up and away you go. Once that depth is set, tighten down these bolts on the side. Take this little guy. Operation one is the first one you do. Run him in. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see that that's essentially flared. Now we're gonna double flare it back onto itself by just flipping this around, throwing it in a wrench, and sending it home. And just like that, we have ourselves a perfect flare. There you go. Let's do that three more times. We'll have ourselves a fixed brake line, I'm ready to find the next weak spot in the brake line. Well. I'd be lying if I said this went well. I did all the work to put our patch line in, realized I made it too short, went through all the work to make another patch line, got it all hooked up, and then this end went dink. So we hopped in the truck and drove 36 minutes north to the only place in Wisconsin that had a set of uh, F-150 front brake lines. These are not like a normal brake line where your soft line would mount to the frame and then you would have this go into your soft line. Rather, Ford and their infinite wisdom in the 70s just made this whole one piece. Which sucks when you break them because they are a pain in the ass to find. If you have one of these trucks, probably get some of these ordered so you got them sitting around. There you go. New line, please. Mine. Okay, Mook, down slow. Going down. Okay, this fluid. I just gotta tighten it before she hits the bottom. And we should be good to go and not have to open this bleeder. In theory. Okay, up. Oh. Okay, that one's good to go. That either means we have working brakes or none of the pistons in the entire car move. Let's rebuild ourselves a carburetor and get it on there and find out. All right, for my next trick, I will be attempting to rebuild an Edelbrock for the first time. Usually our attempts at fixing these, uh, we just take them off and put a Holly on. But these aren't a terrible carburetor, so they're just fundamentally very different from a Holly in the fact that Holly is all diaphragm operated, and these Edelbrocks are operated by these big weights in the back and airspeed. I'm not going to get into the tuning of this carburetor at all today or much of the fundamentals. I'm not going to lie, I haven't done a lot of Edelbrock stuff. I would like to understand them much, much better before I ever move on to the point of teaching about them. Someday, We'll get to that. It's just not today. Basically, this one runs pretty good everywhere except for idle. So, I'm going to assume our idle circuit is potato. You have to do the boops. The boops? There you go. See how well that one came out? <laughs> You're right, Moog. Ooh. Not as bad as I thought, but definitely needs some cleaning. Do. Here's the weights that I was talking about. Basically, even if you go to full throttle and you get into your secondaries, but your engine is too small or you're not up to enough RPM to require all that air yet, these are going to stay closed until the amount of air passing over them is enough to overcome the weight of these weights and pull these air dams open, much like a quadrajet. So, in a sense, pretty neat design with their like somewhat foolproof which is kind of why you can put an edelbrock on just about anything and they're pretty much they're more of an out of the box carburetor you take them out of the box you stick them on they're usually good to go and the reason being if you buy way too big of a carburetor or you don't know what you're doing and you get into your secondaries and your engine runs like crap it's not going to just go a million percent air like a holly will it will just be like hey dummy you don't need that <laughs> you're not ready for that so you're not going to get it you, you might get this but until you're moving that much air, you're never going to go open all the way. So that's a pretty neat feature. The other cool thing that's actually superior on these versus a Holly, 
is their enrichment circuit. Instead of being an on-off switch that is the power valve, they use these needles, lift up out of the jets, and allow for more fuel. So imagine my fingers the jets, and this tapered needle. The further up I move, the more plugged off it is. As I come down, there's more of this jet open. They're like a power valve to where they open at a vacuum level, but instead of just on off, they are linear. With that being said, I'm gonna spend a little time here and get this cleaned up. I'll let you know if we find anything. Other than that, it's just me with a small screwdriver and a bunch of brake clean, and hopefully none of it goes in my eyes. Once again. All right, so I've been cleaning on this a little bit. This is an emulsion tube. It allows air to mix with the fuel so that a nice mist of fuel can come out here. It's, it's mist. This little tube is completely chalked up on both of these and it do not want to move anything. If I do this enough and spend some time to blast this out, I get this nice green shit that comes out. So I think most of our problems, these uh, jet assemblies here. So I'm gonna get these all cleaned out, finish cleaning out all of our bowls, basically just blasting out every jet, changing out any gaskets I see, get this all back together, and I think it's actually gonna treat us pretty well. Now that I said that, probably not. All right, got some new gaskets in there, new accelerator pump thingamabob, uh, some new springs, a whole bunch of different little bits and pieces. It doesn't look like it, but it's cleaned. We're gonna run an auxiliary fuel tank and flush out everything in the tank. Once that's flowing out of the tank in a somewhat clean manner, we'll hook it all back up and see if she runs. And stop. Good luck in there. Let's get her all hooked up and run it off a can to drain her tank a few times. Also the chance it's cammed. That sounds good, but that's, that's not bad for something that's been sitting for 15 years. Which by the way, the, the guys we bought it from, I just talked to them and they said that they got a hold of their guy who built it or the one that sold it to them. It was on the property when they bought it. It said it's been at least 15 years since it was last started. How's it looking in here, Moop? Well, we still got 60 PSI. Well, yeah, coil pressure. No temp yet. Temp Charging. It's a little surgy, but not bad. Wow, that's some nasty gas. ignition timing from ported to manifold vacuum, which kind of tricks it into giving it more timing at idle. Listen. Is it normal? There's ported. You can see it on the gauge, too. Watch how much better it runs. So there's 8 degrees of initial timing. There's 8 degrees of initial plus about 15 vacuum, giving us about 22 total for initial. 22 initial timing. And you can see it runs much better now. So eventually maybe I'll get that distributor to move, but not in the near future. That's getting somewhere. It's a lot better than what we started with. A little more though. Okay, we flushed the tank out again. 
gas is looking okay. I think we got that about sorted out. We got a few other things to fix. We definitely need a new radiator cap or something. This is entirely full, like 100%. <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. She's pretty warm. Our temp gauge says it's not warm at all, so that needs replaced. We have a power steering leak MOOC found on our cooling line down front, so we will have to do something about that. There were no fans running that whole time, so that could be part of it. That's hot air. That's some hot <laughs> air. Alright. See if this thing moves and has any form of brake. be problematic because <laughs> I can't turn these 35s. All right and with that we are out of time for the day. So we'll be back in the morning to finish the work that's left on the battle act. Got to give props to the cameraman for coming up with that name. We're going to cut this into a two-parter, just like in the good old days. Part two is going to be coming back tomorrow to finish the last little bits and pieces we have left, seeing if we can even ensure this, seeing if we can get the brakes and stuff working well enough to try to drive it to the port, head across Lake Michigan, and go play in the sand dunes. So, make sure you subscribe to see when that comes out. Go down there and turn notifications on. It's a little bell right next to the subscribe. That way, as soon as we drop a video, you guys get notified. From all of us here at Junkyard Digs, Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like and a comment. Subscribe to Junkyard Mook. And we'll see you right here next week for another episode of Battle at Glory. Peace. War. That's actually very appropriate for once. Okay, who wants tacos? Me.